previously on The Bill. You know that was? Prince Murdoch. Like the guy who stabbed me with a needle. Some of these photos don't quite do your wife justice. If I'd known he was the person who attacked you, Cathy, he would never have been released. I need to speak to the Commissioner's office. I'm an officer at Sunhill. Zero. We're at the Thames Tavern now. Over. Mr. Travers, stop breathing. Right. Right, the ambulance is on its way. Don't move. Two of them. Wait. Both ran off up the alleyway. I couldn't stop them. One hit me. I, I couldn't hold him. It's all right, sir. But he's not breathing. Get out of here. all here. The Sun, Mail, Telegraph. The front, that's Sam Fraser. I want to speak to the superintendent. Yeah, well, it's not surprising if they think the super's taking a soft line with users. Mm. By election day, we've got the press on our doorstep. Yeah, it beats me how they find these things out. Possibly because someone picks up a phone and tells them, Robbie. Was it you? Was it the heck? Not too many of them, Gina. <laughs> Mum? I was just about to talk to the gentleman of the press. In your office, now. Mum? All right, the press get paid for standing around. Sadly, we don't, so get busy. Come on, chop, chop. If a car wants to let users loose on the street, why does he do it in secret, eh? What happened to open policing? What happened to you? Broken the law, you're nicked. I mean, the public want to see villains nicked and put away. Sounds to me like you've got a serious problem with the super. You just drop it, all right? Nick could have dealt with this. The victim's wife and a witness reckon it was a racist attack. More likely, Nick wants to go down the polling station, have a cup of tea with the old lady. Why did Scotland Yard get a phone call saying that you had instructed your officers not to arrest people found in possession of Class A drugs? I know you have radical ideas, but you're supposed to be steadying the ship here, not inciting revolution. Mom, it's Tim Bowman. <sighs> Looks like Tim Bowman's favourite to be our next Member of Parliament. You know he's strictly anti-drugs, so I can't afford to have you going into uncharted territory with your views. I've already told you. You will join me at the community centre later today, and that's when I want you to talk to the press, not before. The victim's a Ray Stewart, a school teacher. How bad? Fractured skull, broken jaw and ribs. Been having a drink at the Thames Tavern with a friend. The friend spotted two white guys giving him a good kick in. He had a go, but one of them thumped him. This friend? Yeah, Max Travers. He called us and he called the ambulance. Are you detectives? I'm DC Kane. This is PC Bradford, the Sunhill Community Safety Unit. Right. I'm going to shoot. I've got polling station duty. Take care, Anna. I'm sure it'll be okay. Anna, shall we use the relatives' room? You and Mr. Travers believe the attack on your husband was racially motivated. It was Ian Johnson. Ian Johnson? A kid in Ray's class. Okay. We reported him for giving us a hard time because Ray's black. Who tipped them off? And the yard. The canteen Matthew's running you his second favourite. <gasps> Where's Eve? Who's number one? Death Tavern is an outside bet, and Cathy Bradford's number one. Hmm. So what about this Ian Johnson? Early on, Ray banned him from the soccer team after he assaulted an Asian boy during a match. Then things went downhill. Have you got proof? Johnson disrupted classes. He's threatened Ray, sent us poison pen letters. Our cars had swastikas scratched on it, the tyres slashed. He's even pushed dog muck through the letterbox. It's a big jump from that to what happened to Ray last night, though. Ian Johnson is a bully and a racist. That sort of person's capable of anything. What's the score done about it? Nothing. Not until the other week. That's what this is all about. Yeah? Murray made a formal complaint about Johnson racially abusing two kids in the first year. And he got the little thug suspended. Ian's mother said Ray would be sorry. And afterwards, he was shouting threats at Ray as he left the school. Do you teach Ian? Yes. P.S.H.E. Oh, 
Oh. Personal social health education. But he doesn't want to learn. When he bothers to turn up, he's just disruptive. Has he ever threatened you? No. He just insults me. You know, white woman married to a black man. Are all these robberies and burglaries drug-related? Well, it's too early to say, but I would have thought so. You know, last night's fix would be wearing off. And they're stretching the relief, what with the by-election. What about the community safety unit? They can help out. Apparently, they're all busy. Gina, you think Kathy Bradford's a guilty party? Well, she's got an axe to grind after that junkie stuck a needle in her. I can find out. No, Gina. Leave it to me. Thanks. OK. Oh, Jack, have you got any idea about the press on Adam's tale? No, no, but I'm more concerned with what's going to happen now they've got wind of his views. He'll write it out. Oh, I hope so. I've got a bad feeling about this. What, you left him at home this morning, did you? What? Your balls. You left him on the dressing table. If this goes belly up, that's the end of us all. He won't let us down. That's why we have to stick together, sir. When I got outside, I couldn't see him. Then over the far side of the car park, in the corner, he was on the ground. Two youths were kicking. I ran over to them. One of the youths ran off down the alleyway. The other one fronted me. I suppose I ran onto his fist and he hit me again. And then he ran off. Down the alleyway? Yeah, following the other one. OK, was there anyone else around? No, not until I shouted and some people came out of the pub. Um, I dialed 999 on my mobile, tried mouth to mouth. Did you and Ray have a lot to drink? Well, three pints each. It wasn't a boozing session. Can you describe the attackers? White. Dark woolly hats, track tops, jeans. And did they say anything before you were hit? Sorry, it, you know, it all happened so quickly. Their ages? Young. Teenagers, I would say. I'm sorry, it was really dark in that corner. Max, Anna Stewart thinks that um, Ian Johnson might have been involved. Oh, I can't say for sure. But you are sure that they both ran off down towards the alleyway? Yeah, it goes down past the Waybank Industrial Estate. OK. Listen, thank you, Max. You've been very helpful. It's not helping Ray, though, is it? Where's Kathy? Um, checking out last night's assault on Ray Stewart. Brandon. Who do you think leaked the super strong strategy? Sergeant, I know you think it's Kathy, but she wouldn't take this outside the factory. Hmm. James Fitzwilliam was told Adam not to talk to the press unless she says so. Well, so much for thinking outside the box. Oh, they're still outside, Mom. It's all right, Robbie. You're safe in here. I'll get off to the CPS. Laura. I need to speak to you. Yeah, all right. Come through here. Perhaps you did leave something at home. Sorry? Oh, don't mind me. Do you know that woman? That's Mrs Meadows. Only she was in here the other day asking for DS McAllister. What's the matter, Robbie? What am I going to do? They're missing dogs to farm. You should call. Let me know you were. I packed you some things. I don't want you home tonight. I'm throwing you out. Where's the money gone? Debbie McAllister. Debbie? <laughs> Look, I don't know what this is about, but... Oh, don't. Don't tell me you can explain, Jack. Credit me with more intelligence than that. Well, if that's you. My what? My attitude. What do you expect? I mean, it's not like she's the first, is it? Look, Debbie McAllister and me, it's, it's just not... Not what I think! Yeah, she's young, she's good-looking and... Look, we just leave this till later. Busy, are you? You need time to talk to her, get your story straight. Yeah, well, I am busy, as a matter of fact. I've got a meeting with the CPS. Well, don't let anything trivial like our marriage get in the way, will you? Look at this. Ian Johnson, 15. 
Charged with shoplifting assault, criminal damage. Personal, social and health education at King Henry Comp. Turns out scrotes like that, all we can do is caution them. Well, matey, you've run out of cautions now. What did the landlord at the Thames Tavern say? Confirm what Max said. He and Ray are regulars. Never been any trouble. Any CCTV in the car park? No. But the Waybank Industrial Estate has CCTV cameras covering most of the alleyway. So it should be possible to see if anyone's running away from the Thames Tavern car park. Tapes are on the way. Am I clever or what? What time is your appointment? 4.15. So why are you keeping it quiet? I don't want any fuss. You need some company? No, that's all right. I'm coming with you. Debbie's a likely suspect, but Kathy is a firm favourite. What are you saying? The press leak. The phrase guts for garter springs in my head. Listen, today is not the day for disbelief. This is maybe as me. I'd write out my 728 pretty sharpish. Hey, leave her alone, Ken. Who are you looking at? Come on, Brandon. According to Reg Hollis, they're all vampires around here. They don't come out till after dark. Oh, this will be the living dead, then. Mrs. Johnson. Yes, and I'm running late. DC Kane, this is PC Bradford, Sun Hill. Is Ian in? No, I'm on my way out. I was getting ready when you yeah, locked it. Yeah, all right we come in and check for ourselves? <laughs> I don't suppose I can stop you. Thank you. Can you tell us where Ian is? No. I suppose you know he's suspended from school. We'd heard. Ray Stewart had it in for Ian from day one. He's never given him a chance. And his wife, she's just as bad. Always on Ian's case. You know, my boy can't do nothing right and there's other kids get away with murder. What? Last night, Ray Stewart was assaulted. His incentives is in a critical condition. And you're saying my son has something to do with this? Is it right that when Ian was suspended from school, you said Mr Stewart be sorry? And Ian threatened him? <laughs> what I meant was we were going to appeal. I was getting legal advice. I mean, enough is enough. I'm not sure that's what Anna Stewart thinks. Oh, she's mad, that woman. You know she's come round here accusing Ian of all sorts. All right, if we check upstairs? Ian's room's on the right. What's his father think about all this? Oh, he's no help at all. I mean, he sees we're all right with money, but that's all. After his dad left, I let Ian have the big room. You know, like a study. I thought it would help with his schoolwork. Do you know where Ian was last night at uh, 11, 11.15? No. He went out with some mates at about nine. What time did he get back? Don't know. I went to bed at midnight and he was still out. But he's OK. He can take care of himself. Ian, where'd you been? I've got the police here. Oh, no, it's oh, Ian! Upset me. Try it, go on. And I'll put you in the bed next to Ray Stewart. Yeah? And I'll get you done for police brutality. Who's gonna believe a loser like you? Drop it. Go on! Turn around. All units from Sierra Oscar, St. Hughes casualty, victim injured during robbery, Mr. Alan Roberts. Any unit deal, over. Another robbery's just been called in. I know, the National Equity Bank is down the ground. <laughs> what? Well, according to Julian, my personal banker, I'm not £700 overdrawn. I'm 300 in the back. I often do zap, are they? Huh? So, where did the money come from? I don't know, but there is a god after all. Fancy nearly lunch, I'm buying. You'll have to declare me. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. After lunch. You don't like Ray Stewart, do you? No. And you don't like me. In fact, you have made his life a misery at school. Same with his wife. No. And you carried it on outside school, threatening him, damaging the property. Prove it. Look, Ian, you're not talking to teachers now. You're in serious trouble. Weren't you suspended from school the other week? Oh, um, yeah, he made up stories about me and two girls. Why would he do that? Racial abuse is a serious crime. So why didn't the parents come to you about it, then? Why didn't the school bring you in? It's because he's lying. It never happened. Absolutely. Ray Stewart is lying. Getting you into serious trouble, so what do you do? 
Ian, did you and a mate assault Ray Stewart in the Thames Tavern car park at about 11.15 last night? No. Here's the crime number. You'll need that for the insurance company. Thank you very much. And if anything turns up, we'll let you know, yeah? Poor old boy. Had his place turned over. All the fences on remand. They nicked his cash and trashed everything else. Listen, you should have been in here earlier. GCI and his wife have a right shouting match in the interview room. So what was it about? Well, his problem's at home, I reckon. He's married to the job, isn't he? I bet she never sees him. She looked really upset, and I've never seen him so angry. Yeah, and if I don't get that burglary report done and get back out on those streets, someone else will be angry. See ya. See ya. Um, you, um, you being Bob Cryer's niece, cuts no ice with me. Don't gossip about things that don't concern you. Keep out of other people's business. Ian, when you were suspended from school, your mum said Ray Stewart would be sorry. <laughs> then I'll her if she'd done it. So why did you run away earlier? You went out about nine last night. What time did you get home? About quarter past one, half past. Where were you? Just out and about with my mates. The names? <laughs> don't think so. Fine. You'll be kept in custody while we make further inquiries. Interview concluded at 11.47. You lost out. You can only keep me for 24 hours. Then you've got to let me go. Oh, very good. You can hardly read and write, but you know the law inside out. Pissy Bradford. Ray Stewart's in a critical condition. He may not survive. Your client could be facing a murder charge. I was at Paula Gray's house. Well, I was out with my mates and went to Paula's afterwards. Got there about ten and stayed till gone midnight. If this is an alibi you're going to use in court, I'm going to have to continue the tape recording. I'm telling you, you can check it out. You're at Paula Gray's house all the time. Just said so, didn't I? And Paula and her parents will support that. Well, her parents were out. But Paula will support what you said. If she has to. What is it, Ian? Young love? I'm like you'd know. Look, me and Paula was in bed. She's only 14. Her old man will kill us if he finds out. OK. You are going to stay here while we check this out. I want Paula's address and your mate's details. But what about Paula's old man? We'll deal with that later. That would have saved us a lot of time and trouble if you had said this earlier. Yeah. And who's going to believe a loser like me? It's really ticking you off, isn't it? Letting Ian go. What can we do if his alibi stands up? We've just seen our prime suspect walk. Am I missing something? I think we're both missing something. Yeah? Ian and the lovely Paula are getting it almost every night. Yeah, and it's underage and technically non-consensual. They're still getting it. This is Debbie McAllister. Hmm. I, um, need to speak to you. So, do we know leak the story yet? Uh, well, if you ask me, it was McAllister. You reckon? I'd put my money on Kathy. Yeah, she could be seeing how far Superintendent Akaro can be pushed. Hey, Brandon. You work with Kathy. What do you reckon? I reckon if all you can do is gossip, you've got too much time on your hands. Hey. Mm. I was just wondering whether you're the one who leaked the story to the press. Diddle tattle, this is far more interesting. The CCTV from the Wayback Industrial Estate shows the alleyway from the Thames Tavern car park. And? Well, apart from a couple snogging like the snow tomorrow, there's absolutely no sign of two white persons running from the direction of the Thames Tavern car park. So Max Travers is telling porkies. And given that Anna confirmed nothing was stolen from Ray? We should look a lot closer to home for what really happened to him. So are you driving or am I? <clears throat> Yes, Max. 
Is it right for coming for a second? Yeah, of course. Thanks. Is it about Ray? Uh, no, no, his condition hasn't changed, I'm afraid. No, we just needed to talk to you. I, um, wanted to tell you in person. I am not having an affair with your husband. Why should I believe you? I don't even know what I'm doing here with you. You're here because you're a sensible, rational woman. Jack's with you all hours. He doesn't answer my calls, and now he's taking money out of our account. And that means he's having an affair with me, does it? Look, Jack's my boss, and sometimes we work cases together, and as bosses go, he's the best I've had. And he's a friend. He's a good friend. That's where it ends, Laura. Look, it's not been a great year for any of us. And what with me having a baby... But Jack's not the father. No. But he's been a great support. And the money was a loan to tide me over after the baby was born. And he'll get it back. And he'll get it back. So why is he helping you? Because he's a good man. Treasure him. There's not many of them about, believe me. And besides, he's far too old for me. OK. So you leave the pub. No sign of Ray in the car park. Right. Then I saw the two youths. And they had him on the far side of the car park. Kicking the life out of him. I ran over, and like I said, uh, one ran off and the other stayed and had a go at me. And then he ran off? Yes. Down the alleyway? Uh, yes, after the first one. Look, I did say all this earlier. Yeah, we know, Max. Thing is, we checked a CCTV tape from the Waybank Industrial Estate, and it shows the alleyway, really clear. Absolutely no sign of two guys running down the alleyway from the Thames Tavern car park end, so. Max, did you assault Ray last night? Max. Look, I... I don't think I should say anything else without a lawyer. PC Bradford. I'll process Mr. Travers. Brandon, sir. We all know whoever called Scotland Yard also called the press. And that call came from this station. Well, if that's the case, sir, shouldn't you be making a formal disciplinary matter? No. It's between me and the officer concerned, and that's where it stays. You see, Cathy, I can understand where they're coming from. You mean they think a liberal attitude towards drugs is a dangerous thing? They sparked off a debate. And that's a good thing? I have my instructions. Strict instructions as to what I can and can't say. Are you telling me you're pleased? I've used the press before. I'll see them again. I find I could be very useful in releasing the genie from the bottle. So the person that leaked the story actually did you a favour? This time. If there's a next time, I'll bounce them all the way to Scotland Yard, personally. Sir. Don't let me keep you from the job. Not exactly, but the matter's closed. Mom? This won't involve you, Inspector. Thank you, Gina. The media will be at the community centre at six o'clock this evening, when Tim Bowman's there for the count. My press officer has arranged for you to hold a press conference. I want you to make a statement in keeping with current policy. Current policy isn't working. Quick fixes and knee-jerk reactions are no way to deal with long-running, deep-seated problems. Superintendent. There's no continuity. The drugs are, ten-year plan, ministers moving from department to department. Enough! You will present the Met's policy on drugs with me in public. Is that clear?
So, you hired me to be your puppet. Adam, you're here because you're a good cop who can run things on the ground and see the wider picture. And I'm trying to get everyone to see the wider picture. Well, you don't do it in public. Do you hear what I'm saying? I've left you notes listing the main points you'll need to cover. And this press conference isn't a request, Adam. It's an order. Can you tell us why you attacked Ray? We argued about Anna. About Ray and Anna. They're together? Yeah, that's the problem. You mean you're interested in Anna? No, no, not at all. I was trying to get Ray to level with Anna. And he wouldn't. So you hit him. He's betrayed her. Lied to me. You don't have to say anything. Four years ago, Ray and I went on holiday. And one night, things got a bit out of hand, and, well, we ended up with a, a couple of the local prostitutes. I got scared, and I had an HIV test a few months ago. I suggested Ray do the same. Mine came back negative. Ray's came back positive. Yeah. Godfather. I've heard from my informant. There's a drug deal going down. Now, Dave Hedges and Kevin Lane are meeting two guys from Peckham at the Renfrew Way end of the Larkmead. OK, well, take Danny, set up an obo and see who the new boys are, OK? Oh, and be careful, cos Hedges and Lane usually go in mob-handed and they won't take kindly to competition from over the river. Right. Um, Gov, I need to speak to you. Uh, well, he'll have to wait. Uh, I've got to sort something out at home. Oh. OK. Oh. He promised to tell Anna. He and I have always been honest with each other. So honest, you almost killed him last night. Look, I'm not particularly proud of what I did, how it happened. Anna's innocent in all this. And since then, I've always practiced safe sex. Ray told me he did too. Go on. Well, a couple of weeks ago, Anna told me she was pregnant. He's been having unsafe sex with Anna. He's betrayed her. That's why you argued last night. Because Ray wouldn't tell Anna. Oh, why don't you tell her if you liked her so much? I mean, she was at risk. Ray could have given her a life sentence and the baby. Uh, don't you think you owe her that much? I take it you've seen Superintendent Lacaro? Yeah. Was everything all right? He seems to think whoever went to the press did him a favour. Brought it all out in the open, he said. That's as may be. I'm sorry, Sarge, is there a problem? I understand the pressure you've been under, but to go to the press about your superintendent will do you no favours round here. The super wants to treat users with kid gloves and Ackland. She's on his side, the silly cow. I mean, what is it with her car, oh? Is it his colour? I mean, they're always going on about drugs being a cultural thing. Oh, oh, oh don't even go there, Cathy. Sorry, I didn't mean it like that. Listen, you're having a bad day, right? I know that. Are you sure you want to do this? Brennan, who's going to want me now, eh? If I'm HIV, I forget AIDS. It's like a death sentence. Hey, don't, don't say that. It's not. Right, firstly, you don't even know if you've been infected, right? Secondly, the, the, the treatment for these things is really advanced now, you know? People lead normal, healthy lives. And thirdly, I think most grown-up rational people know about safer sex, right, eh? It's not the barrier it used to be. Would you sleep with someone if you knew they were HIV? Yes, I would. So you have to take him out for four days, yeah? Yes. Look, uh, I'll be with you about ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Laura. Sorry, I was wrong. Talk outside. So that's it, is it? 
You come in, you drop me a bag off, you tell me it's over, and now you're sorry. I made a mistake. Look, can we start again? We always used to share everything, and now I feel excluded. It's like... It's like you've got another life. It's my job, it's what I do. No, it's not. It's a state of mind, and I don't think you'll ever be free of it. Look. When Derek Conway and the others were killed, I told myself you'd see sense and get out, but you didn't. And so I asked myself, why? Why you put yourself at risk every day? Why you spend such a long time away from home? Away from me? Look, I do a young woman a favour. And you accuse me of having an affair. I mean, what happened to trust, to talking? I didn't know what else to think. It just looked like you wanted to be with her. Yeah, well, maybe I do. Look, there's nothing going on between me and Debbie, but I wish there was, and you know why? Because she makes me feel alive. What, and no, I don't? Look, I'm sorry. Jack, please, can we sort this out? No, please? you're right, it's over. I won't be coming back. So what's so important stopping me getting to Ray? Oh, well, your place is really nice. So you and Ray have been married, what, two years now? Yes. And you're pregnant? Yes. Three months. I suppose Max told you. And Ray is the father? Of course. What do you want? Max has confessed to assaulting Ray. Max? He wouldn't hurt a fly, what are you talking about? Before you and Ray met, he and Max went on holiday together. They both had sex with a couple of prostitutes. And? Max had unprotected sex. He's since had an HIV test. What's this got to do with me and Ray? Has Ray ever discussed this with you? No. Why would he? Right. Anna. They both had unprotected sex that night. Do you want to sit down? They both since had a test. I'm sorry, but Ray told Max that his test was positive. What? Kathy. No. Before I was pregnant, I could have been positive. What baby? It seems Max was trying to get Ray to tell you. And it all came to a head last night. No. How could he? How could he do this to us? You've got no right to tell me this. Well, if we didn't, who would? Ready, Adam? Lovely. Let's get it over with. Oops. Mustn't forget my statement to the press. I'm surprised Jane Fitzwilliam didn't write the whole thing for you. She practically did. I'm under strict instructions to follow Met policy. Show United Front. I think she'll change her mind next week. <laughs> Kathy, you've got to be careful. If Anna reports you for breaching Ray's confidentiality, you're going to be in big trouble. You should have told her. Yeah, but it's difficult, isn't it? Anna comes home, says, I'm pregnant. Ray says, right, well, I'm HIV positive. That's not conducive to happy families. You mean he's weak and he knew she'd leave him? If he lives, he's going to have to face the music. Thank you, Miss Bradford. Would you like to take a seat? You see, people like Ray sleeping around, they deserve all they get. Me, I was just doing my job. <clears throat> Brandon, I don't think I can do this. I'm really scared. I know you are. I think it's dealing with Anna and Ray, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Look, it's okay. I understand why you said the things you did. You won't tell June about the things I said to Anna? No. No, of course not. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Not at all. Catherine Bradford? Come here. You go in there, all right? You'll be okay. 
Can you wait here for me? Yeah, I'll be right here. Kathy, your initial test is all clear. No sign of HIV. Of course, we won't know that you're definitely clear until the six months test results. But this is all very encouraging. Thank you. Now, you will still need to be careful, though. In particular, you will need to maintain a healthy diet, like we discussed last time. And of course, continue practicing safe sex. Yes. Kathy. Kathy. Hey, hey. What is it? It's my test results. Yeah. I'm HIV positive. Come on, let's find a bar. Yeah. I'll go back to the Nick. You what? There's no point in me sitting in a bar feeling sorry for myself. There'll be plenty of time for that. Well, I'll want to buy you a drink. Nah, I'm gonna go back. Hey. I don't know I'm gonna cope with this. Well, you're gonna start by taking the rest of the day off and having a drink with me. Well, what about work? I oh, forget then. I'm not gonna take no for an answer. All right then. This one. Good. Come on. Yeah, here we go. Looks like we're on. That's Dave Edges in the leather trousers in Kevin Lane. So where's your boys from south of the river? Five minutes to go, yeah. So what happens now? I wasn't really listening. More tests, no join a convent. Rubbish. Do you think Anna will stay with Ray? I don't think so. Oh, no, that's different. He cheated on her, lied to her. Brandon, I am HIV positive. Listen, you can forget about the convent. It's like I said, there is such a thing as safe sex. It's wide open down there. That way both sides can see there's no nasty surprises. Way. What about these boys? Well, I can pull them any time. Run through way. The borough commander's really stitched her up on this one, isn't she? You think so? She stormed into sun here like the fifth ride of the apocalypse. <laughs> Subtlety was never Jane's strong point, but there's more to this than her own short-sighted agenda. What? You think the yard and the home office are pulling her strings? Jane would never admit it. She likes to delude herself. We're an independent police service. All units from MP. Renfrew Way, East 1. Shots fired. One person injured. Possible drive-by involving a silver Mercedes or Audi motor vehicle. Part index X-ray 5-9. CO1, Trojan 501 and LAS on way. Any further units deal? MP, show Sierra Oscar 5 on way. We'll go. Jane Fitzwilliam and her political circus can wait. Right, Renfrew Way and quick. Oh, that's not a 
Can you move right back? Can you see what? Right back. Thank you. Do you see me? How many? How many in the front? I did see any men drive the car. Talk to me, Debbie. Well, Danny and I were in a lot of a lot in the car park. So what happened? It seems there were two men, possibly the ones that were meeting our dealers. And according to witnesses, a car flew past and there was a burst of gunfire. By the time I got down here, it was all over. There's no sign of any cars or shooters, just... Well, do we know who he belongs to? No. Apparently he was just playing. Charge here, Gina. Get it all boxed off. Witnesses the lot. It could have been a setup, girl. I've got a couple of leads. Then get to it. So. Come on, you'll be late for the press conference. I'll get you a lift. I can get to the community centre on my own, Gina. I'm a big boy now. I mean, you're sexy, you're gorgeous, man, and... You're very sweet. You, well, you're, you're the same. You're, you are fun, Kathy. You've got a, you've got a great sense of humour. You've got a foul temper. <laughs> you're a great copper, and you're, you're an attractive woman, you know. No, I'm not going to say any more, you're loving this. I am with you. Look, um... You said before that you'd uh, <coughs> sleep with someone who was HIV. I did, yeah. Is that just talk? No. No, it wasn't. Jensen get the necessary. No, 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 it's all right. Um, then it gives them away. Excellent. That's good. Better late than never. I've been calling you on your mobile. I was busy. Yes, well, you've missed Tim Bowman. He went off about ten minutes ago. I suppose you may as well just get on with your statement. Shall we go in, then? Cast your vote, Superintendent. Mr Fraser, you know why I'm here. It's been a long wait. <laughs> First, let me apologise for my late arrival. A short while ago, a seven-year-old boy was shot dead on Renfrew Way. It seems he was caught in what appears to be a drug-related drive-by shooting. An innocent child gunned down, playing, on a street not far from here. Superintendent? Look, 
I came here to read a prepared statement on the war on drugs and our recent successes at Sun Hill. But those successes didn't save that boy. And this statement won't save other young lives. Or stop an old lady being robbed to pay for a fix. Are you saying we can't win the war against drugs? I think when international drug cartels decide to target this country, we are ill-prepared and ill-equipped to stop all but the smallest amount of drugs getting through. We have the harshest drug laws in Europe. And where have they got us? In the last 30 years, the number of heroin and cocaine users has risen from 1,000 to 280,000, and they're responsible for a third of all property crime. More recently, there's been a 200% rise in the use of crack cocaine. In my view, there is no way we can realistically enforce the law in relation to cannabis. And hard drugs are going the same way. That sounds like anarchy. Anarchy killed that young boy. I want to see an end to all that. But like it or not, hard drugs are here to stay. We will not stop them. So, the real question is, how does society live with Class A drugs and reduce the number of casualties? Drug abuse is not just a criminal matter. It is a health and poverty issue and needs to be dealt with realistically and properly on all these fronts. The shooting rooms of Holland provide a safe, sanitary and supervised environment, making medical grade hard drugs available in such a way and at reasonable prices could end drug smuggling overnight. Superintendent, are you advocating the decriminalisation of Class A drugs? Yes. Yes, I am. Next time on The Bill. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. I can imagine how tempting it must feel to find 1,000 quid in your bank account. The bank will sort it when they discover the mistake, all right? You walk out of that door, you walk out of a job.